Welcome back everyone. As most of you know, Windows 11 has actually just came out. So let's go and do a quick little walkthrough of this specific software. Now, if you've ever used Windows 10 or Windows 7 or Windows 8, it's kind of the same thing. Obviously from Windows 10, there's a lot more similarity. So by the end of this video, you should have a good understanding. It's probably gonna be pretty long, but hopefully you should have a good understanding of this specific software. Now, hardware wise, you may be running this on a laptop, an actual desktop PC, whatever it is. It should be the same exact experience. I'm running this on an extremely cheap laptop, so if this thing can run, you can kind of get a good sense of how your laptop will run as well. So this is the lock screen. Every single laptop is, or any you know Windows 11 PC should be somewhat similar. You'll have your date and time right here. You'll have, I guess, a little fact here, which is kind of good, you know, if you're into it. You have a little bit more information here. Depending on your specific computer, this may look a little different, but typically all you have to do is go ahead and click down and you'll come into the sign in page. If you have a user set up, then all you have to do is sign in, put in your password and everything. At the bottom, there's some quick toggles though. So if you wanna quickly power off your PC, you can go and click here and either sleep, shut down, or restart your PC. And this little option could be a little bit different per PC. So here is just some extra you know, peripherals. If you wanna go ahead and modify these, you can. And right here is your Wi-Fi toggle. You can connect to other Wi-Fi's and all this stuff. So let's go and click sign in and we will come straight into our Windows 11 PC. Now in this case, let's just do something super basic. I'm going to go ahead and cover lay, lay of the land is pretty much. So up top, typically this is a brand new PC. So you should have a recycle bin here, the Microsoft Edge browser, and many other applications if you're already used to your Windows 11 PC. So everything here should look pretty similar things that are usually universal are you know creating new folder so if you ever want to right click on your laptop you can either tap with two fingers on your specific computer like this or you can right click on your computer too with that actual button if your com if your computer supports it so when you do that you can always get more information on your specific page so even if you double click on an application you can modify so many different things so if you're very new to windows 11 and windows in general kind of double tapping like this on your trackpad or right clicking on the mouse will always get you more information. So you can click view and modify the aspect ratio of your specific thing. You can sort by different things, you can refresh. You can always create a new folder, file, Microsoft Access Database, Excel worksheets, so many different things you can do. So just even understanding this little option is pretty cool in my opinion. So you can also you know, modify your display settings, but look, that I just double tapped here, right? If you double tap over an application, you do get more you know, specific information from that. So get used to double tapping, different things like that, that's usually how it is. And then you have your wallpaper, which you can also modify later, which we will go ahead and modify in the settings later on. And that's pretty much it. This will pretty much always be the same. This is your home screen, essentially. Now at the bottom, we do have our you know, dock, our tab bar at the bottom. Now the thing is with Windows, 11 specifically, they did change and modify this tab bar. So it used to be over here, or like with our start menu and stuff. Now it is all centered. And I think, you know, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. But it's a pretty easy way to kind of walk through this. So all the way to the right, we do have a ton of other things too. But first, we'll start off with the middle. So here, this Windows icon is pretty much always going to be there. These icons we can change and modify. But this specific icon, if we mentioned earlier, if we right click it, I don't think there's a way to delete it. And it's just pretty much always going to have to be there versus if we right click on something like Microsoft Edge right here, we do have the ability to unpin from taskbar. So we can click unpin from taskbar and move on from there. And if you ever want to open up an application, you can go and click there. So these are all applications that can be modified and removed from the taskbar, except for this one. This one can pretty much only stay there. I think we can move it around. We can't even move it around. So this is always going to be stagnant. So if we go and click into this, you will see a ton of different things that you can go ahead and modify. This is universal for every single Windows 11 and honestly, every single Windows PC from before. So if you go and look up top, we have a type here to search. So this is going to be, if you're very new to Windows, this is going to be your saving grace. If you ever have any questions or you're wondering, hey, where is this file? Or where is this thing on my computer? Or how do I do this? For example, if I type in like change desktop wallpaper or whatever, you can already see that I'm already seeing a bunch of things come up. So even if we don't cover it in this tutorial or if you can't find a tutorial to fix a certain thing, you can go ahead and click here and you can go ahead and find you know, ways to actually go around it. So if I go and click in, you know, change wallpaper, sometimes you'll come up with things, sometimes you won't. As you can see, it's not really doing a great job at first. But if you scroll down, you can see choose your desktop background. So this does a great job and I would recommend you to get comfortable with it because again, you can't, we can't cover every single little tiny thing in these tutorials. 
but you can pretty much search any tiny little thing and pretty much move on from there. Now, right here, we have our pinned applications. So these are great. I'm not gonna go through every single little one of these, but what's great about this is you can go ahead and pin applications from you know your specific you know applications that you have and pretty much move on from there. So here are a ton of them. If you wanna move these around, you can just kinda of hold it like this and move it around somewhere else. If you wanna here, you can move it there. If you wanna see all the applications that you have, you can click here and see a massive list of all the apps that you have currently on your computer. So if we go and click the back button, you will see that you can go ahead and you know delete these here too. You can go and click unpin from start, but also you can go click all apps and you can pin these to start by right clicking here and clicking pin to start. But at the same time, if you want to uninstall some of these applications, there is an uninstall button. So let's say you don't like Amazon, well you can just click uninstall, click uninstall here, and it'll go ahead and uninstall that. Now some applications I don't think can be uninstalled, but a lot of them can. So I'd recommend going through uninstalling the ones that you don't like and don't be like super crazy to uninstall every single little application, things like Excel, things like File Explorer, all these ones you want to pretty much keep for the most part. So let's click back. And if you remember earlier, we removed our actual, you know, Edge browser from our specific tab bar at the bottom. So let's say we want to bring it back. So if you actually want to go ahead and bring it over and pin it to our taskbar, all you have to do is right click on the specific application like this and click pin to taskbar, which is right there. So at this point, you will see the application will now be you know, housed right there. And like we mentioned earlier, you can go ahead and move it around and we can put it back to roughly around the same spot that it was before. So a very easy thing to do, nothing super crazy, and that pretty much covers up these application you know, settings right here. Now down here, it'll go and show you any recommended applications, anything like that. It's definitely nothing super crazy, but you know, if you see anything here, you can kind of look at it, but it's nothing insane. Right here is where you can go ahead and switch between users of your computer. So if you have multiple different users, things like if you're, you and your spouse share a computer, you and your kids share a computer, you can go and click here and click change account settings, and you can go ahead and add users, remove users, and kind of tinker around with different things here. Now I am the administrator here, and don't get super crazed out or feel like this is new territory here. This is just the settings panel. We'll cover the settings in a second, but this is where you can go ahead and modify your specific computer and all those different things specifically for your accounts. So again, you may be wondering, hey, how do I go back home? I open up this application, well, it's very simple. On the top right, you will see three different buttons. So you'll see an exit button. If you ever want to exit an application, you go ahead and click here and it will completely close the application. If you want to make this specific application smaller, well, you can go ahead and click here and you can minimize the application. You can also click back in here to make it bigger, but you can also double tap the top portion of your specific application kind of around here to quickly toggle from you know a big size to a small size. But on top of that, within Windows 11, we now have the ability to hover over this and choose different ways we want to go ahead and you know actually position this. So before we had to go ahead and drag our window like this or make it smaller like this, and then we had to manually like go like this and make it bigger like this. You can grab the corners and make it bigger or smaller and smooth the side. But now we can just hover over here and we can basically pin it to the side easily. So I would recommend you to get used to that if you wanna move your application from one side to the other. And this is great. And the reason this is great is because you can quickly go from one side to the other and actually have two applications. So in this case, let's go ahead and open up our file explorer like this, and you will see it kinda of covers up like this. Well, the same thing occurs here. If we hover over this, we can make it so we can click here and the two applications are pretty much side by side within each other without having us, you know, having to go and like, you know, manually, ma manually size them and everything. And you can actually from the center grab one portion to make it bigger than the other application. And you can do the same exact thing with the other side as well. So that's a new feature within Windows 11. There used to be like, you know, applications that allowed us to do it, but now we have it natively within Windows, which is so beautiful. So like we said before, we can exit out an application like this, and we can go ahead and make this bigger by double tapping the top bar at the top. And now let's say you want to go ahead and minimize this application. You don't want it to be on your face the whole time. You just want to kind of move it out of the way and you want to open it later. Well, this minimize button is perfect for that. It'll pretty much just move away. So you don't really have to have it right in your face the whole time, but it's a very easy process to pretty much maneuver through your applications. Now with the tab bar, you will see still the same applications that we have, but you'll see one, one app actually has a little you know bar at the bottom of it. Well, that actually means that that app is still technically open. So you can open it and come back to the same spot. If we exit the application, you can see the application not only comes away from our screen, but it's removed from our tab bar at the bottom. And the reason that is, is because this application is no longer open, it's no longer present, and it is closed. So you can go ahead and make your way back in over here. You can click your settings here or click all apps, and then go ahead and look through your specific settings app that way. 
So that's a pretty good breakthrough of the tab bar at the bottom. That's pretty much a majority of the new things within Windows 11. Obviously, there's a lot of smaller things. Now, if we look all the way to the right, we will see a couple of different sections. So this, you know, pretty much up top arrow is just hidden controls of this specific section. So if we go and click on this, you'll see a couple of different peripherals, Bluetooth devices. Sometimes some random applications will have some things here too. Windows security. OneDrive, your sound option here, and also this little Microsoft Teams option. Big thing is Bluetooth here. So anything you don't have set up here will be under hidden controls. So that's a big area to be, you know, kind of familiar with too. Now you can go to the side right here, and here is where you will see a bunch of different things. These are a bunch of quick toggles that is beautiful and it's great. And I think actually Microsoft improved this quite a bit from Windows 10. It still has a lot of improvement to be done, but it's actually much nicer looking. So right at this section, this is a quick toggle to quickly turn on and turn off your Wi-Fi. So you can click here and it will go ahead and turn off your Wi-Fi. Anything that is gray is essentially turned off. Anything that is blue is essentially turned on. So we can go ahead and turn our Wi-Fi back on by clicking on here and it will go ahead and pretty much, you know, just turn the Wi-Fi on. You can also click here to get more into your Wi-Fi connection settings. Also the same thing with Bluetooth. Let's say we don't want Bluetooth on. We can turn it off and anything that's grayed out is turned off. Same thing with airplane mode, battery saver mode, and accessibility. And those things are great. Awesome toggles for you to quickly turn on and turn off certain things. At the bottom here, you'll see your brightness toggle. So if you ever wanted to turn your brightness up or down, we can go ahead and drag this brightness toggle up or down like this and quickly turn on or off or increase or decrease your brightness. I typically use the buttons on my keyboard, but this is another awesome way to quickly do it if you are using a laptop or if you don't have your function buttons working properly. And the same thing can be done with our music as, and sound as well. So you can increase and decrease the sound like this, grab it, and if you want it louder, you go here. But you can also click into your sound icon like this, and you can actually see a little bit more of your specific sound options, which is cool. So we can click back once more, you'll see your battery percentage here, and you can also modify these specific toggles here by clicking here, and you can modify anything you want, you can add certain things. In this case, we'll just click done, and we can hop out of here. Now this final thing right here, if you click in it, it's just a little bit more information of your specific computer, different notifications that have come up, you can always close out of them by clicking clear all, and it will should clear out mostly everything. If you click it, you'll see this little toggle come up, and you can also go and click here, and you can see, you know, the date and the time and this, you know, whatever day it is today. And that's pretty much a basic walkthrough of this specific thing. Now I do also want to show you guys the Microsoft Store. So in order to get there, you'll find this little toggle here, but you can also click into the Windows icon here. And we can just, for example here, we can just type in Microsoft Store. So let's just type in Microsoft and let's type in Store. So you can see, even if we didn't know where the application was, we could type in Microsoft Store here and it would basically show up here. So we can click here and we can go ahead and locate. Now I'm not gonna spend 30 minutes talking about this, but this is a great resource if you ever want to download apps, if you ever want to get any more information about your specific computer in terms of like what apps you can install and everything. Well, we can go ahead and go through here. So first of all, let's increase the size of this by clicking there. And here you can download all the applications that you ever wanted that are supported for your computer. The Xbox app is an amazing application that I love. WhatsApp desktop, so many different things. And I'd recommend you to actually go through here and look through all these different things that we have available. Because chances are, if you have, you know, an application that you want to download, it may be here. You can still install and download, you know, .exe files. But this is a great thing that I always recommend people to get familiar with because you know it's where a lot of the applications are stored. So let's go and click this X button and exit out of here. Now another thing I wanna show you guys is within the file explorer. So if we go and click here, this is where if you ever wanna search for any documents or any folders that you have within your PC, this is where they may potentially be stored. So you can click desktop, and this is where all the folders and files on your desktop will show up here. Your downloads folder, your documents folder, all sorts of different things, your pictures folder. I would recommend to go through here and get familiar with this because this is one of the most used things that I ever use on a specific Windows PC. And I would highly recommend you guys to get familiar with this too. Essentially, this is your file manager. This is where all the files on your computer are. And again, this is one of the most important areas of your specific computer. Now we can go ahead and click this exit button and we can make our way over to our settings application. So again, let's click here. Let's go up here and let's just type in settings. And when we do that, even before we're done typing, we automatically see the little settings option here. So we can click on settings and we can come straight into here. Now, sometimes an application may close. All you have to do is just go ahead and try opening it up again. Sometimes they close, sometimes as you can see, for some reason it's not working. So if that ends up happening, we'll just kind of have to just restart our computer. But in this case, I'll just click here. I'll click change account settings. And I should be able to come here. And essentially, whenever you open up your you know, system settings, 
Now, for some reason, our system settings is not actually working. As you can see, it keeps faulting out, which is totally okay. In this specific case, I'm just gonna go and click on change account settings. And the system settings right here is the main little portion, but you'll still see all these things that are still familiar here. So within system settings, you'll see a whole breadth of different things, but let's kind of explore them. So under Bluetooth and devices, you can pretty much just see all your Bluetooth and devices, things that you have supported. Definitely nothing super crazy. You guys are pretty familiar with this. Same thing with Wi-Fi and internet. Whatever internet connection you have set up, you can pretty much see more information here. Under personalization, this is where you may be able to get a little bit more fun out of, I think, setting up your PC. So here you can go ahead and set up your different wallpapers that you want. So if you want to choose a different wallpaper, in this case, we'll just choose this one. And now look what happens. This thing changes here, but if we minimize this, not close it out, you'll see the desktop is now that familiar Windows 11 PC one. Now we can go ahead and open up this application now too, and you'll see we're back to where we were. You can change up your themes, you can change up your styles, your lock screen, so many different things. And I'd recommend you guys to go through here and again, get familiar with customizing your PC. Now under apps, you'll see pretty much all the different applications and you know different things you can set up here. I don't really use this one too often as you can tell, but it's another good area to be familiar with. Now under accounts, like we mentioned, these are the different accounts and everything that you can set up on your computer. And again, if for some reason it keeps crashing, which is going to happen, you know, if you're, especially if you're a new Windows 11 user, things are going to not you know, work out properly. You're just gonna have to find ways to fix it. Sometimes resetting your PC or restarting your PC can easily fix a lot of these issues. Now under time and language, if you're in a different time zone or you wanna change up the time or whatever, you can go ahead and modify those within this specific option as well. Under gaming, I don't really use this too often, but this is a great way to go ahead and actually capture your screen recordings and screen captures. So if you click on Xbox Game Bar, and I'll make a separate video talking about this, but there's a lot of you know little shortcuts within Windows to kind of offer things that other applications actually offer. So I'd recommend to check out the link in the description for different ways to actually screen record and different things like that. I've already made tutorials on them, so this is a basic guide, so I'm not gonna go super crazy. Under accessibility, like we mentioned before with the lock screen, different things you can go and modify here. Privacy and security, I probably would never recommend modifying this, but the one area that I would always recommend you to go and check out, especially if you're on Windows 11, is right here under Windows Update. Within Windows 11, there are lots of different things that still need to be fixed, like you saw with my settings panel not working properly. That can, will probably be fixed within like a month or two from now, or maybe even today, I don't know. So what I would recommend you to do is to constantly check out this Windows Update panel here and make sure your PC is updated. Because if you installed the first version of Windows 11 and you're a year into it, probably there's already fixes for everything you're complaining about. So I'd recommend going under Windows Update right here and actually updating your PC as often as possible. So you can see there's already some update available. So I'm going to click download and install, and this is going to download in the background. I can still continue to use my PC as I normally would, but while this is downloading, I would recommend you to kind of get familiar with updating your PC. You can also check out your update history to see when you updated to Windows 11 and all this good stuff. So this is without a doubt one of the main things I'd recommend you to look into as well. So like we said before, we can minimize this and come back to our home screen. So that's pretty much the main walkthrough of everything I wanted to hit on. You should have a basic understanding of Windows 11 and most of the raw core features within Windows and how to pretty much maneuver your way through. And again, there's a lot of a lot of information that we haven't really talked about, but that's more technically more than a beginner should know. So you should have a good understanding of Windows 11. I may make a follow-up video talking about more advanced things, but as of right now, you should have a good understanding with Windows, at least Windows 11. If you guys have any other questions or anything like that, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.